For the past two or three years, I've been using this DIY fume extractor slash filtration system that I've built with off-the-shelf components ordered from Amazon. It has been really helpful keeping the nasty soldering fumes away from my lungs and I highly recommend you get yourself some type of filtration if you do even occasional soldering for more than 15 to 20 minutes per session. I've been quite happy with my system because it wasn't too expensive at the time of purchase. It ended up costing half uh, or a third of what a commercial system would have been. And replacing the filters on this thing uh, would be much cheaper also when compared to a commercial system. But in today's video I have received for review such a commercial system and I would like to compare it if it's still a viable, viable option to DIY or should you just buy a commercial system and save you some time. One mention that I would like to make is that the commercial system we are looking at is not directly intended for solder fumes extraction so it doesn't come with the accessories tailored to that uh, but in terms of filtration capability it should be adequate it's just that it doesn't have the accessories that would make your life easier the unit we are looking at today was sent in for free from vivor.com for the purpose of this review but it currently sells for around 220 euros shipped to the eu from their eu warehouse and there is an equivalent pricing for the uh, us warehouse i think they have multiple worldwide warehouses so you'd have to check for your location by clicking the link in the description by comparison the unit that i built was composed of a ducted 100 millimeter fan 26 watts rated power 198 cubical meters per hour running at 2200 rpm uh, 31 db of noise current price 87 euros including shipping 4 inch carbon filter for hydroponics applications current price is 65 euros including shipping a hacko flexible segmented hose 160 euros including shipping and although expensive, this thing makes it really easy to use. I've also used a Triac speed controller for the fan, a plug, some cable. These were roughly 10 euros. I don't really use the speed adjustment setting. I just use it on full blast every time for proper extraction. So you don't necessarily need this uh, speed adjustment module. And this brought my total to roughly 322 euros, which a few years ago was it may be a third of a professional fume extractor. So back then it was worth spending the time to build this DIY system. I also wasn't as busy as I am today. And I spent maybe another 20 euros on some clamps and an additional flexible duct. Uh, I 3D printed an adapter, but those are not necessarily needed. However, after all of that effort, I had uh, clean air, not a lot of suction power because of the thick filter and because of the motor that I, I choose because of the long ducts that I use but it was usable as long as I was soldering next to it it sucked the fumes and there was absolutely nothing coming out of that filter at least nothing that I could smell or see it worked very well for me before I go any further with this review, let me introduce the sponsor of this video, PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with fast turnaround times and excellent build quality. But not only that, you can also get your entire product manufactured with PCBWay because they offer services like PCB assembly, enclosure manufacturing, parts sourcing, so give them a try on your next order. But now let's look at the Vivor fume extractor, which you can get for 220 euros shipped to your door. This is way cheaper than you'd have to pay for a DIY solution and in my case the unit was delivered from an EU warehouse via courier so I was in the position of the unit in just a few days. It was well packed in this thick cardboard box and inside the box we get the main unit which is very heavy made out of metal approximately 15 kilograms we have uh, an, an exhaust adapter or maybe this is just a piece that it's used to connect it to a um, laser cutter for example uh, we also get three uh, of these aluminium foil flexible ducts two clamps and one mains ac cable plus a short kind of useless user manual and there's also some of this uh, spare pre-filter material my unit seems to have taken some damage maybe during shipping even though there was lots of padding inside this uh, box the unit itself is very heavy and the cardboard does show signs of it being dropped during transport and you can imagine the couriers throwing this thing in the back of the van because it's heavy and they don't feel like carrying it it's nothing too serious that can't be fixed 
uh, it doesn't even impede the operation of the unit. We also notice the label with the uh, specs of the unit. It says universal 110 to 220 volts mains input, 80 watts power rating, but as we'll see later, it doesn't quite match up and 180 cubical meters per hour with a noise level of 58 decibels. You get a set of these key locks and I don't know why you would want this to be key locked but opening uh, these locks gives you access to the inside where there's like another metal box just sitting in here. This is not attached in any way, it's just sitting by gravity and this is our filter box. And before your first use you have to open this and there will be a bag of filtering charcoal inside which you will need to take out of the bag and put inside the filtration unit. So uh, the order of the filters is this. You have your pre-filter material, the white stuff at the top, then you have your charcoal, then you have this coarse filter, then a finer one, then what looks like a HEPA uh, off-the-shelf filter unit at the bottom. They mention a filtration level of 99.97%, which I can only assume is with regards to maybe something like uh, PM2.5 particle size. Obviously, there will be a lot of mess when you start adding the charcoal to the inside of this. It is in this, um, it is contained uh, into this uh, net type of uh, bag but obviously a lot of charcoal dust will be thrown around when you handle this and you can kind of tell that it's built for a more industrial environment laser engraver type of scenario where you wouldn't mind handling a little charcoal it is not ideal for a clean electronics lab type of scenario with a pair of gloves i was able to get away with uh, minimal dirt uh, escaping this so it wasn't really a, a problem for me installing this just make sure you have a pair of gloves nearby there are these uh, sets of gaskets on the top and bottom of the filtration unit so this whole thing relies on gravity and weight to keep everything airtight with the motor section which is underneath and I think it, it it does the job but generally speaking it it's not a tidy construction and, and for sure this cannot guarantee that 99.97% uh, PM2.5 particle size filtration just because of the way it's put together, not because of the filters. Now I would like to run a few tests on this to evaluate the uh, suction power, if there's anything coming out of the filter exhaust, how much power it uses, how much noise it makes and I'm going to compare directly to my DIY solution. First things first, I'm going to be using my Hakko flexible duct for this as it makes my life so much easier on my workbench. Uh, you can operate it without this accessory, I know it's kind of expensive but it really makes your life easier on the workbench if you have such an accessory. And immediately after powering on the unit, I noticed two things. Number one, it's suction power. It's definitely more powerful than my DIY system. It's capable of sucking the fumes for a, from a greater distance, maybe doubling the, the working distance. And number two, uh, the noise, which so far has been edited out on this voiceover, but here is a sample of what you can expect. measuring with my um, unity sound meter shows this to be around 65 decibels at approximately one meter away from the unit. I didn't quite search for the highest level, just a general measurement. By comparison, here is my DIY system, which is putting out roughly 55 decibels. And remember, this is a log scale, so it, it is noticeably quieter and a different spectrum, less annoying, but of course at the expense of a lower suction power. Again, because the professional system is intended for being operated next to a laser machine, its noise level might not be a problem, but it could bother you in a quiet electronics lab. It's up to you to decide if you can accept that or not, or maybe if you can position this further away from your work workbench and uh, still uh, have its benefits by running you know, a longer uh, connecting pipe. In terms of power usage, the professional system uses roughly 145 watts, which is almost double than the claim 80 watts mentioned on the label. I can only assume that they probably installed different spec motors on these things. So the label is maybe from a different model. By comparison, my DIY system uses roughly 22 watts. So that's 6.5 times lower power usage on my DIY system. 
The next thing I want to talk about is the availability of replacement filters because with my DIY system I can simply go on Amazon and purchase a new standard off-the-shelf 4-inch hydroponics filter relatively inexpensive and replace it when uh, I think it's due. With the professional system there doesn't appear to be any available spare parts on the Vivor website and this might be like a standard rectangular size PM2.5 filter that you can purchase elsewhere uh, but I just don't know where. It could also be a case that you will not be able to find the replacement filter material uh, sometime in the future. However, realistically, even with intensive everyday soldering, you should still be able to get many years out of a single set of filters by just replacing the pre-filter every so often. And they do include extra pre-filter material in the box. For example, uh, Hako coats their uh, system. They give you 200 hours of usage on the pre-filters and they say the main filter should be replaced every 10 pre-filters. So, I don't know, given the rate at which I solder here, I should be able to easily get at least 5 years out of my uh, main filter. Now, in terms of performance, you get greater suction power from a professional system and presumably better filtration level because it uses multiple filters including what looks like a HEPA filter in the last filtration stage. My hydroponic filter is not up to that level for sure. And in terms of storage space, it's likely about the same for both systems, although the commercial one does make it a little easier to handle and position because it's an all-in-one system and has these handles on the top. So with all of this in mind, I can give you my final thoughts. And if you run any kind of laser cutter or engraver machine and you're looking for a filtration system, this will no doubt do the job for you for a very good price. And if you plan to use this for soldering fume extraction, again, it will do the job for you with very good suction power and very good filtration. There's nothing coming out of this filter. It pretty much catches everything. However, at the expense of a rather heavy, noisy and power hungry machine. If you want the best of both worlds, then you'll be pleased to know that Vivor also sells a specialized soldering fume extractor which I'm showing on screen right now and I don't think this was available when I received my units a couple of months ago but now that they do have this on their website and they sell it with a one or two port option uh, it's 150 watts rated, uh, three stage filter, three speed le levels, includes the flexible desktop duct system. Uh, it's pretty much everything I've complained about in this video fixed in this specialized system. So what I would consider is either the DIY option with its uh, shortcomings or the Vivor specialized soldering fume extractor unit. Uh, which I will hopefully take a look at in a future video, but for now you'll find the link for it in the description below. Personally, I will keep uh, using my DIY filtration system, which is under my desk, because it just uses less power, it is less noisy, which matters for me in my small quiet lab, but I will be keeping the Vivor filtration system for a future laser cutter, which I plan to get at some point. But should you decide to order this filtration system, Check out the link in the description below and if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to support me making more videos like this one, you can do it on my Patreon with as little as $1 per month. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.